the current that is going into the resistor, some of it is getting converted into heat, and therefore the current that comes out must be smaller than the current that went in. The goal of this video is to look at this logic and see if it makes sense. Now, first of all, I love this doubt because this is real science. You look at something and try to create an explanation and then see if that explanation makes sense or not. That's the essence of science, all right? So let's go ahead with this explanation. Uh, it's true that he, this heat energy must be coming from somewhere and it's probably coming from electricity because it's electrical energy converting to heat. And so the next statement because of that is that the current going in, um, some of it got converted into heat, therefore the current coming out must be less. How do I know if that makes sense or not? Well, what I do and whatever you should do in general when you have an explanation is to always try to go one step further and try to make it a little bit more specific. The best way to do that is see if you can draw your explanation. Here's what I mean. Here's how I'm gonna draw your explanation, all right? So you said that the current coming out is less than the current coming in, okay? But what is current? Current is basically the flow of charges. It's, it's a number of coulombs per second or we could say number of electrons per second. In this entire circuit, we have the negative charge over here that's gonna push the electrons this way and the positive charge is gonna pull the electrons this way. So your electrons are going this way. So over here, there are some electrons traveling. Let's put some number to it. So let's say there are about 10 electrons moving per second every um, through this point. And let's say the, 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 the ch current reduces, which means the number of electrons per second somewhere over here, that should be less. So let's say that should be let me write that over here. That should be three electrons per second. And the remaining is getting converted into heat. Does this make sense? Well, the first question I get is that when 10 electrons are going in every second and only three are coming out every second, what's happening to the rest seven electrons? Where are they going? So when you say that the current is getting converted to heat, are we saying that these electrons are getting converted into heat energy? Well, let's see, what exactly is heat energy? Heat energy is basically jiggling of atoms. So then are we saying that electrons are getting converted into jiggling of atoms? Hmm, that doesn't probably make much sense. It doesn't make much sense because it, it breaks one of the most fundamental rules of our universe. Matter cannot disappear. That's called conservation of mass right? If electrons disappeared, then suddenly we have mass that got disappeared. And that cannot happen. Now, of course, you might know about Einstein's e equals mc square, but we're not going to touch that. That's not applicable over here. It's a completely different topic. So if you don't worry about that, well, electrons can't get converted into heat. Electrons cannot get converted into any energy. Electrons stay electrons, okay? But you might say, Mahesh, maybe the electrons don't just disappear. Maybe the electrons kind of get stuck in between. Maybe the electrons transfer their energy into the resistor and therefore they just lose all their energy and they get stuck in between. Why, why can't that happen? I, I love this argument as well, but because again, we're doing science. We're coming up with an alternate explanation. Um, and so over here, then what would happen is that every second, seven electrons will get accumulated inside the resistor, which means if I were to run this circuit for like say uh, 10 days, and hopefully the battery doesn't die out till then, then I would have a lot of electrons accumulated over here. And you might say, Mahesh, what's wrong with that? Does that, does that break any rule of the uh, universe? As long as things don't break the universe's rule, it should be fine. I don't care, you say Mahesh, I don't care how comfortable or how, how uneasy you feel, <laughs> I care about the laws of physics. See, if the electrons keep getting accumulated, you will have negative charge keep getting accumulated like this. And the problem is we know negative and negative repel each other. Why in the world would electrons just stay there? It doesn't make any sense. If electrons get accumulated even a little bit, they would just get repelled from each other and they would just fly away from each other. So there is no way over days, I mean, this might happen over microseconds because at the microscopic level, things are chaotic, but over, over large time intervals, this cannot happen for sure. Now, there is one condition under which this can happen. You know what that condition is? If we had some branching over here, if this happened, then it's totally possible that some of those electrons, say the seven electrons would actually flow up per second, three electrons would flow over here per second, but notice you will always count, you will always account, that's the word, for all the 10 electrons that went in, 
10 electrons come out, 7 go up, 3 go over there. Electrons cannot get stuck anywhere. Electrons cannot disappear. Which means the current here must be exactly the same as the current here. And in fact, the current everywhere would be the same. And again, if you want some intuition for this, I've talked about this in one of my previous videos, where the way I like to think about it is imagine that it's a circuit where you have cars everywhere. And even if there's a ditch or rocky road somewhere where the car slows down, because there are cars everywhere, the cars slow down everywhere. And so now then you may be wondering, okay, where does this energy come from if it's not from the electrons? Well, it is from the electrons. <laughs> <laughs> but but let's look at it very carefully over here, okay? So if I zoom in, we probably already know that electrons are colliding with the atoms, making these atoms jiggle, and that's how heat energy is formed, okay? But let's look at this process a little more, more carefully. What's gonna happen is that this electron is being pushed by the negative terminal of the battery, or you can say it's pulled by the positive terminal of the battery. Now, that means that electron tries to speed up. The battery tries to speed that electron up. This means that the electrons goes on speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and boom. Then it hits the atom and transfers the energy. Where did that energy come from? Hey, that energy actually came from the kinetic energy of the electron. But we can ask, where did the kinetic energy of the electron, where did that come from? Well, one answer you could say is, hey, because the battery is pulling or pushing it. But if I were to answer in terms of energy, it's very similar to asking, hey, when you drop a ball, where does the ball's kinetic energy come from? Hey, we say it comes from the potential energy. It had potential energy at certain height. That potential energy gets, keeps getting converted into kinetic energy. And the same thing we can say over here. We can say that this electron has potential energy over here, and as it accelerates, that potential gets converted to kinetic, 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 and boom, and then all that kinetic also gets converted into, gets converted into the jiggling, the vibrations, and eventually into heat. But has the electron lost all its potential energy? No, because I know that after some time, again, it's gonna start accelerating, 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 boom. And it keeps on doing that. So as the electron comes from here to here, the potential energy of the electron gets converted into the heat energy that is coming out over here. And where does the electron gain that potential energy? Well, as it goes through the battery, notice the battery is pushing it against the electric force. Notice it repels the negative charge of the battery, but it pushes against it and transfers the potential energy into it. And then that potential energy gets transferred to the kinetic energy when it accelerates, but then into the heat energy of the atoms. So do we have a complete picture now? The battery transfers potential energy into the electron. The electron tries to convert that potential to kinetic, but then that kinetic gets converted into heat. And therefore you can see the electron's motion in the resistor, it's not a uniform motion. It continuously keeps speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. However, in this entire bumpy motion, you can still kind of sort of see the electron is moving forward. It's kind of drifting forward. This is what we call as the drift speed. So when we say that electrons don't slow down as they go through the resistor, we're not talking about the actual speed. That's very chaotic. We're talking about this drift, this average drift speed with which the electron goes. That does not change that stays the same. That drift speed is the one that's responsible for the current. And before we end, I have a question for you, a hypothetical question. Imagine in this entire circuit, there wasn't many electrons. There was a just one electron going around like this, only one electron, which means everything that we talked about with the car analogy breaks down over here. The car analogy no longer works. If this was the case, then what do you think happens to the electrons? Do you think the electron would still be traveling with the same speed everywhere now? And when I say I'm, talk I'm talking about the speed, I'm talking about that average drift speed, okay? I'm not talking about the actual speed. That keeps changing anyways, right? Would that be the same? And ultimate question is, would now the current outside and the current inside the resistor, would that be the same or would it be different? Let me know your answer, but give a rationale. It doesn't matter whether your answers are right or wrong, but what matters is your justification. That's how you learn science and the scientific process. And also feel free to add comments 
two other answers so that we can have a debate going on. I too will participate. See you.